have y'all seen this video before? I think it was posted um, sometime in December, but now it's just starting to get picked up by like mainstream media. So like, for example, billboard.com, they posted this story. It says TikTok pastor says he went to hell and demons tortured him with Rihanna and Jasmine Sullivan songs. Um, that's a wild headline. <laughs> so obviously that caught my attention, right? Um, but it's interesting because like I said, they posted this in December. It's just now starting to get traction. I don't know who this guy is, Gerald Johnson. I don't know if he's a pastor of a church, if he's a TikTok social media pastor. Um, I don't, I, I, I don't know. Maybe y'all know, but it says Johnson is a leader of Gerald A. Johnson ministries in Texas. And let's just watch the video. I mean, that, that would probably be the easiest way to, for us to, you know, understand what the heck is going on with this story. Um, oh, before we do that, though, I'm going to start going live a lot more on this channel right here. Um, I'm talking like I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to go live like every single day, maybe starting in like a week or two. So if y'all are interested in that. I need y'all to hit that bell notification and make sure that your notifications are turned on um, for YouTube and on your phone specifically. So that way, when I go live, you'll get the notification. Otherwise, you're not gonna know when I'm gonna be going live. Um, but let's get into the story. It says, hell is a real place. I was there in 2016. Once again, this is Gerald A. Gerald a. Johnson. I don't know what dude believes in. I don't know what his background is. They're saying he's a pastor. Let's just see what he has to say, all right? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't turn the, 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 the audio on. All right, here we go. So is it true that you saw hell? Oh, yes, uh, absolutely. I saw the real hell. I was there. And I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. I don't care what a person has done to me. I would never wish that on them. Um, but for me, the way it went is that I thought that I was having a heart attack. And uh, I physically, my, my spirit left my physical body. And I thought that I was going upward but because uh, I had thought I had done so much good in this lifetime and helped so many people and made so many decisions that were godly decisions. But um, as opposed to me going up, I went down and I went literally into literally into the center of the earth. And that, that's where hell is. Jesus even said that in the scriptures. He says, uh, just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a well, so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth, uh, which is where, where hell is. Um, the things that I saw were literally undescribable and just brings me makes me emotional every time I talk about it but uh it was uh one of the one of the things that I saw that just blew me away was there's a man on on all fours like a dog he was burned from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet and his eyes were bulging out and what was worse than that is that he had a chain around his neck so he was like a dog in hell and what was even worse than that is that who was holding the chain it, it was a demon holding the chain and I knew because their things are not, they're not said, they're known. You just, it's like a telepathic communication. Um, I knew that this demon was sent in this man's life to ride him from his childhood until the time that he died because the demon knew that if I could stay in his life long enough on the earth, if I can keep getting him to not serve God and to make bad decisions on the earth, then I'll have power over him in hell and he'll be a slave to me. So it's like twice a slave is like you're, a slave on the earth to the things of the devil, and then in hell you're you're really like a tormented dog slave. Uh, so, and then there was another part that I experienced that just blew me away. I just I'm it still baffles me to this day. If there was a section in hell where music was playing, and it was the same music that we hear on the earth, but as opposed to uh, entertainers singing it, uh, the music demons were singing it. And it was some of the same lyrics that we hear here. Um, and then again, things, like I said, they're not, things are not telepathically, they're te things are telepathically known there. I knew that on earth, a lot of the lyrics and the music and the songs are inspired by demons. So sometimes when people smoke to get high and, and to, to get lyrics. Okay, hold on one second. Um, Look, I'm not saying this dude is lying because this, this is his own personal experience, right? You know, this might have really happened to him. He might have really had this vision, had this experience, um, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, I, 
for me, I don't understand what he's saying when he when he means telepathically. Like things are things are communicated telepathically. Because when I think of hell, obviously, like he's saying, hell is not a place that you want to go to. I think Christians and people who fear God understand that you don't want to go to hell. The problem is a lot of these people, specifically like the younger generation who are coming up, they don't give a you know what about hell. They don't give a you know what about hell. They want to go there. They think it's going to be a party. They think it's going to be a, 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 a huge like Coachella concert or something like that. They want to go there. And that's the problem. But. You know, I, I just, I don't know. Test the spirits, right? Use your own discernment as we're watching this. Because I, I just, let's just continue. Y'all don't want to hear me talk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't want to hear me talk. Let's let's just continue. But I, I'm just saying, I'm, I don't know. The vibe kind of, the vibe kind of throw me off, but let's go. Lyrics and to get verses and rappers and all those things. So in a lot of music, people actually smoke to get high, to get verses and to get bars and to be hot and to be fresh and uh, to get that, that swag. But when they open themselves up uh, to a false high, it's like illegal access into the spirit realm. They actually come in contact with demons who give them lyrics for the purpose of controlling people on the earth. So uh, there, see here, music is for like to get over a breakup. Don't worry, be happy. I busted windows out your car or... Uh, uh, under my umbrella or whatever, uh, there, every lyric to every song is to torment you as to the fact that you didn't worship God through music when you were on the earth. So it's like, you know, you had a chance to worship him in church and worship him at home and worship him through music, but you chose to uh, worship Satan by repeating the lyrics that he inspired to come into the earth. So uh, there's people there for that because music is very controlling. And... Um, uh, I was so, I was angry with, with God because it's like, how, how did I do this much good? And, and I'm actually, um, I'm actually in hell. Well, um, uh, I lifted up out of hell and I came back on the earth and God began to speak to me. I actually saw the real Jesus. I saw him and he began to speak to me and he said that, he said, you have been secretly upset with the people that hurt you. Um, you have been hoping that I would punish the people that hurt you. He said, these are not your people. These are my people. He says, I only want you to focus on the assignment. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Did he say he saw Jesus? Hold on. With, with God, because it's like, how, how did I do this much good? And, and I'm actually, um, I'm actually in hell. Well, um, uh, I lifted up out of hell and I came back on the earth and, God began to speak to me. I actually saw the real Jesus. I saw him and he began to speak to me. And he said that he said, you have been secretly upset with the people that hurt you. Um, you have been hoping that I would punish the people that hurt you. He said, these are not your people. These are my people. He says, I only want you to focus on the assignment that I'm giving you because I want to do something through you that the world hasn't seen. Uh, and so the root of it is that although I did good, I gave a lot to people. I, I, I did a whole lot of good things. The thing that I had in my heart was unforgiveness towards people who had did me wrong. Because a person that can't forgive is a person that's forgotten how much they have been forgiven of. So uh, that's my experience with hell. Hell is a real place. And I don't believe that God, God doesn't send people to hell. People send themselves to hell. And whatever's still left inside of you that God has been trying to get out of you that you you die with, that's going to determine where you go. Mm. God's going to... Why, yay, yay, sir. Hold on. What's going to determine where we go? That God has been trying to get out of and I don't believe that... God, God doesn't send people to hell. People send themselves to hell. And whatever's still left inside of you that God has been trying to get out of you that you, you die with, that's going to determine where you go. Whatever is still left inside of you that God has been trying to get out of you that you die with is going to determine where you go. That's false. God's going to want to know, did you learn to love well? Did you learn to forgive well? Did you serve me well? Did you do something greater than your life? That's did like that. Th this is now he's going into like a, wor a works based type of salvation type of thinking. Did you do anything that has eternal significance or is everything selfish? So. I thank God for the light. Because look, the only, 
He's saying if you did anything that was, God's going to look at us when we die and he's going to say, did you do anything that was of eternal significance? And that's going to determine if you go to heaven or to hell. Um, that's false. I'm going to show you one more video, but that's false because the only thing that we can do that is of eternal significance is put our faith in Jesus. That's the only thing that we can do that's going to get us into heaven. Anything else is just a works-based salvation mindset. And that's not, that's not going to get you into heaven. If you want to be judged based on your works, you're free to do that. And a lot of these people who don't care about God, who don't want a relationship with God, who don't care about whether they go to heaven or hell, they're going to be judged based on the works that they did. And like he was saying, a lot of people think that, well, I'm a good person. I didn't kill nobody. I, 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 you know, I, I, I didn't go to prison. I didn't do this or that. I was a good person. I was, I had a family. I did, I, I took care of my family. I did everything right. I raised my children assuming that they're going to be in heaven because of that, because of the works that they did here on earth. But the only thing that you can do to get you into heaven is to put your faith in Jesus, is to put your faith in the finished work that Jesus covers your sins, not yourself, not yourself. So look, I get the idea of overall what he's trying to say. He's saying that God gave him some type of vision or something like that, took him to hell so that he could share the experience of how bad hell is with the rest of the world. And he can be a testimony, right? I understand that. And look, hell is bad. Christians, we know hell is bad. If you fear God, you know that hell is bad. I think the problem is a lot of us think that us telling other people how bad hell is, is actually doing the reverse. Like by, by us telling people how bad hell is, I feel like most people think that that's some sort of, that's some sort of like manipulation tactic. They see us as trying to be manipulative and say, well, if you don't live for God, you're going go to go to hell. But and, and instead of saying that, and I've said that a lot, I've said that to many people, you know, if, if you, if you don't live for God, then ultimately you're only going to go one of two places when you pass away, heaven or hell. But to a lot of people who don't know God. I think that could be seen as being manipulative. So for me, and this is just me personally, like y'all can do whatever you want. But for me, something that I'm going to try to work on is, is to not focus on the aspect of hell, not to diminish the reality that is hell. But when it comes to new people who are, who are just getting to know Jesus or who maybe don't know Jesus at all, I want to just focus on Jesus. I want to focus on what he did. I want to focus on the goodness of God, of how he can transform us, of all the beautiful, good, and righteous things that he wants for our life. I want to, fo I want to focus on that aspect of it. And I, I want to show them the, the, the true good side and the positive benefits that come with following God and serving Jesus. Because I think for so long, we get in the mindset of, don't do that, you're going to hell. You know, telling them like the scare tactic way of trying to get them closer to God. But bro, in reality, like I said, most of these kids don't fear hell. They don't fear hell. They don't. Um, but also, he said he saw Jesus. He said he saw the real Jesus. That's why I say y'all got to y'all got to test the spirits for yourself. Like, I don't know. I'm not saying this dude is lying, but that's a pretty big claim to make. It's a pretty big claim to make. I'm more interested in that aspect of it. What did Jesus look like? That's what I want to know. If I could ask this dude a question, what did Jesus look like? What, what was that experience like alone? You seeing Jesus face to face? Because that's a very bold claim to make. But anyway, um, here's another video of basically because the last video that y'all just watched, it went crazy viral. Right. Um, but I guess he was saying there was some like fake news and people were not reporting on it accurately. Um, so this is the second part to the video that y'all just watched. How are you a priest when you are in hell? OK, yeah. First of all, I'm not a priest. <laughs> I never said I was a priest. I never claimed to be a priest. Again, that's fake news that's the media taking 
in uh, saying that I said something that I didn't say. I am a pastor, but I'm not, I'm not a priest. Uh, so now you may ask, how, how was I in hell? Well, I was in hell. The Lord guided me there to get a message for people to let them know about what happens to a person when you don't forgive. You know, so if a person is a messenger and they were sent by God. I don't like that, though. He said the Lord took me to hell as a messenger to tell people what happens to them when you don't forgive. But unforgiveness is not going to send you to hell. Unbelief is going to send you to hell. Unbelief in Jesus Christ is going to send you to hell. Not unforgiveness. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm not understanding what he's trying to say, but let's continue. God will allow you to experience certain things so that you can tell other people. So people need to understand that there is a real devil. And if I'm working for God, of course the devil hates me. And his job is to take and twist what I said. The devil is not organic. He always has to copy whatever God does. So God is trying to bring people out of darkness. He's trying to bring, take people out of hell. He's trying to take people out of a life of unforgiveness and out of a life of sin. So the devil says, I can't have that happen, so I'm going to deceive a lot of people and make them think that this guy is doing something wrong. So what's happening is that um, the fake media, um, in order to propagate their stories, in order to get follows or whatever, they have taken my words and mixed them up. I never mentioned Rihanna's name in the video at all. What I did say is that in hell, music is being played. And I made reference, I said, you know, like on earth, uh, you know, people play music for different reasons, like relationships. Uh, but in hell, music is there to torment. People took the story and made it seem like I was saying that her music is torturing people in hell. You know, I work for God. I will always work for God. I will always serve God, no matter what people say. God is going to get the glory out of it. Um... Do y'all think there's music in heaven? I mean, in heaven. I think there's music in heaven. Um, the question was, do I think, do y'all think there's music in hell? Um, I don't, I don't really know how to feel about the, that video. Either one. Um, I understand that God could use people and that God can give people different visions, right? And dreams and, and, and prophetic words. I understand that God can use people in that capacity. Um, but I don't know. Something about this does, don't really sit right with me. It don't sit right with me. I understand hell is bad. But I think the fact that, that you know, what he was saying was like, you know, God's going to check your heart. And if you still have, like, for example, unforgiveness in your heart when you pass away, then you're not going to enter into heaven. And I, that's just incorrect based on the scriptures, based on the Bible. That's not, that is not an entry point. Your forgiveness is not an entry into heaven. Your, your faith in Jesus is the only thing that's going to allow you into heaven. All this other stuff is just what God calls us to be. The Bible says, be holy for I am holy. God calls us to live a holy life, but you know, just because we fall short of that standard of holiness from like a day-to-day -day standpoint doesn't mean that we're not going to get into heaven. Because if our faith is in Jesus, in his finished work on the cross, then we're going to get into heaven regardless of if we have unforgiveness in our heart. Um, but yeah, you know, like I was saying, Oh, another thing he's talking about. He's talking about the music and stuff like that. Yeah, certain music is demonic, right? If it's not being inspired by God, then obviously it's who is it inspired by? It's inspired by the devil, right? But to say that there's going to be music in hell, mm, I don't know if there's going to be music in hell, bro. I don't know. I don't see that in scriptures. I see weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't see music. I don't see music. And that's not to say hell is not real. Hell is absolutely real. Um, but like I was saying, I think that we should be preaching the other aspect of it, which is for God so loved the world, how much he loves us, the relationship that he wants with us, how 
The Bible says we were, we were once an unknown people. Now we have a new identity. Now we're children of God. Now we're a, a, a royal priesthood, those who put their faith in Jesus. Now we're a royal priesthood. Now we actually have a hope. I think we should be preaching those aspects of it when it comes to, to, to newer people, right? To people who don't know God, to people who don't know the faith. I think that's the aspect that we need to be focusing on, or at least in my opinion, because you look at this world now, these young people have grown up the majority of their life. By young people, I mean like age 25 and below. They've grown up a majority of their life. If they've had parents who are believers, the number one thing that I bet their parents were, were, were telling them was that they're going to hell if they don't change their actions, if they don't change their behaviors. Now they're completely desensitized to hell. They think hell is just going to be a place where all the cool people go, all the you know non-prude people go. That's where they think hell is going to be. It's going to be one big party with all their friends. But I think we need to preach the other aspect of it to get them to see why it's beneficial, why it's so incredible to have a relationship with Jesus as opposed to just preaching the downside and, and the negative side of it. That's just me. But let me know what y'all think. Get in my comments. Let me know what y'all think about this video. Let me know what you think about everything. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm out, y'all.